Canada may have just overlooked one of the most strategically important fighter jets of the 21st century. As more information comes out about South Korea's KF-21 Borame, one question becomes unavoidable. Is the KF-21 actually a fighter Canada should buy instead of the F-35 Lightning II? In this episode, we'll take a deep look at the aircraft itself, how it compares to the F-35 Saab Gripen E, why it looks so much like the F-22 Raptor, and whether it aligns better with Canada's real defense priorities like Arctic sovereignty, NORAD obligations, and long-range interception missions. By the end of this video, you may see Canada's fighter needs in a completely different way. A quick reminder, if you like my content, please subscribe and share. It really helps the channel a lot. I'm Pierre Shields for North Omega. Let's go take a look. Canada's real fighter needs. Canada doesn't use fighter jets the same way the United States does. We aren't planning deep penetration stealth strikes over enemy territory, and we aren't preparing for carrier-based operations across the globe. The overwhelming majority of Canadian fighter missions involve long-range Arctic patrols, NORAD interception of Russian bombers, sovereignty flights over remote regions, escort missions, air policing duties for NATO, and supporting search and rescue coordination. These missions demand a very specific set of capabilities. Canada needs long-range, high endurance, and reliable performance in extreme cold weather. We require aircraft that can operate effectively from remote forward operating locations, often with limited infrastructure. We need twin-engine safety when flying over vast oceans and uninhabited ice regions. Less so today because engines are so reliable. And we need fighters that can be maintained quickly and flown frequently without destroying the defense budget. When you understand what Canada actually needs fighters for, the conversation around the KF-21 becomes much more relevant. The F-35 Commitment Canada has committed to purchasing 16 F-35A Lightning II fighters. The F-35 is undeniably a remarkable aircraft. It's a true fifth-generation stealth jet with world-leading sensors, advanced data fusion, and an unparalleled ability to operate within the American military ecosystem. However, the F-35 comes with serious challenges for a country like Canada. First, the F-35 struggles in cold weather environments. Norway, which operates the F-35 in Arctic conditions, has repeatedly reported freezing components, maintenance delays due to ice buildup, and the need for heated shelters that aren't always available in northern locations. If Norway is experiencing these problems, Canada will almost certainly experience them as well. Second, the cost per flight hour is extremely high. Most independent estimates place the F-35A's operating cost between $44,000 and $55,000 per hour, which makes it one of the most expensive fighter jets in the world to operate. For a country with a large airspace and a limited defense budget, this becomes a major limitation. Third, readiness rates have been a persistent problem. Many countries operating the F-35 report low availability, maintenance bottlenecks, delays in parts delivery, and software issues that ground aircraft for long periods. And finally, most of the F-35 capabilities, especially its stealth strike abilities, aren't critical to Canada's core missions. Canada's priority is not to sneak aircraft into heavily defended enemy airspace. Our priority is to monitor and defend the second largest national airspace in the world. This doesn't mean the F-35 is a bad fighter. It simply means that some of its strengths aren't aligned with Canada's primary needs. South Korea's KF-21 Borome. The KF-21 Borome is South Korea's next generation multi-role fighter developed by Korea Aerospace Industries with significant design input from Lockheed Martin. It's equipped with modern avionics, a powerful ESA radar, an infrared search and track system, advanced cockpit displays, and two American GE F414 engines, the same engine family used in the Super Hornet and the Gripen. I know, I know, American engines, I know, I know. The KF-21 is not a stealth fighter. Instead, it uses what engineers call reduced radar cross-section shaping. This means the aircraft incorporates many low observable design features without relying on highly sensitive stealth coatings or complex internal weapons bays. The KF-21 carries all of its weapons externally, which dramatically simplifies maintenance, but virtually nullifies its stealth shaping advantage. The Bora May was designed to be easy to operate, affordable to maintain, and compatible with Western weapons such as the AIM-120 AMRAAM and the AIM-9 Sidewinder. It was built for long-range air defense patrols, missions that are extremely similar to Canada's NORAD responsibilities. Most importantly, the KF-21 was created to be a practical, real-world fighter jet that smaller and medium-sized air forces can afford to fly regularly. That places it in a very different philosophical category from the F-35. Range and Arctic performance. Canada's geography is unforgiving. The distances between runways, refueling points, and northern bases are enormous. Emergencies often occur hundreds of kilometers away from the nearest settlement. Flying long missions in extreme cold across uninhabited regions is the norm, not the exception. This is where the KF-21's twin-engine configuration becomes extremely appealing. 
A single engine failure in northern Canada could force a pilot to eject over frozen ocean water or remote tundra. A twin engine jet dramatically reduces this risk. The KF-21 has a competitive combat radius, strong aerodynamic efficiency, and excellent climb performance. It was originally designed for long-range patrols along South Korea's coastline, where endurance and rapid interception are crucial. Those requirements map almost perfectly into Canada's Arctic and Northern defense missions. While the F-35 stealth technology is useful in certain scenarios, most of Canada's day-to-day -day missions require endurance, reliability, and the ability to respond quickly, not stealth penetration. Cost per flight hour. The cost per flight hour is one of the most important and least discussed factors in fighter procurement. The F-35A is consistently estimated to cost between $44,000 and $55,000 per hour to fly. Some countries report even higher costs. This makes it one of the most expensive fighters in the world to operate. By contrast, the KF-21 is projected to cost between $12,000 and $16,000 per hour. The Saab Gripen E is even lower, often cited between $6,000 and $8,000 per hour. Why does this matter? Well, because operating costs determine how much pilots can train, how many patrols can be flown, and how often aircraft remain mission ready. If Canada can't afford to fly its fighters frequently, then it doesn't matter how advanced they are. A fighter parked on a runway is not defending anything. The KF-21's lower operating costs would allow Canada to fly more hours for the same budget, improving readiness, pilot proficiency, and Arctic coverage. Maintenance realities. Canada's fighter bases, such as Cold Lake and Bagotville, are supplemented by northern forward operating locations like Inuvik, Yellowknife, Rankin Inlet, and Iqaluit. These locations often lack the facilities needed for complex stealth maintenance. The KF-21 was designed to avoid these issues because it doesn't rely on delicate stealth coatings or internal weapons bays. The aircraft can be maintained more quickly and with fewer special tools. Its external pylons make weapons loading simpler, its modular avionics make troubleshooting faster, and its overall design philosophy emphasizes availability over stealth. For a country like Canada where bases are spread out and personnel are limited, an aircraft with easier maintenance requirements can dramatically increase the number of jets that remain flight ready at any given moment. Industrial benefits. South Korea has become one of the most dynamic defense manufacturers in the world. The K2 tank, K9 howitzer, and FA-50 light fighter have all seen enormous export success. The KF-21 program is positioned to follow the same path. If Canada partners with Korea on the KF-21 program, we could gain meaningful industrial participation. This could include manufacturing components, integrating avionics, servicing engines, hosting maintenance hubs, producing software upgrades, and even helping develop future variants. This type of industrial involvement hasn't been available to Canada since the days of the Avro Aero program or early Bombardier era. Joining the KF-21 effort could revive Canada's aerospace sector and position the country as a serious contributor to next-generation military aviation. Comparison of the F-35, Gripen, and KF-21. The F-35A Lightning II is the most technologically advanced fighter of the three. Its stealth, sensor fusion, and battlefield connectivity are unmatched. However, these strengths come with high operating costs, complex maintenance, lower availability, and limited relevance to Canada's primary mission profile of long-range Arctic patrol. Something that's interesting too, the F-35s that were slated to have, now that Saudi Arabia has this deal where they're gonna buy a ton of them, I don't know how much we're gonna be the preferred client. So will we just be pushed back further and further and further? The Saab Gripen E is the most cost-effective option and arguably the best cold weather fighter ever designed. Its electronic warfare suite is legendary and it can operate from short, icy runways with minimal support. However, the Gripen is a single engine aircraft, which raises safety concerns for long overwater missions in the far north. Its industrial scale is also smaller than the KF-21 program. The KF-21 Borome occupies a middle ground. It offers twin engine safety, reduced RCS shaping, a modern sensor suite, moderate operating costs, and open architecture that makes upgrades easier. It's not stealth, but it's built to be highly maintainable and highly available. It represents a practical and affordable approach to modern aircraft defense, one that maps closely to Canada's real needs. Why the KF-21 looks like the F-22 Raptor. One of the most frequently asked questions about the KF-21 is why does it look like the Raptor? The similarity is not a coincidence. First, Lockheed Martin provided significant design consulting to South Korea as part of its F-35 industrial offset package. While the United States didn't transfer stealth technology or classified materials, Lockheed did share aerodynamic modeling, shaping philosophy, and design guidance. This influenced the KF-21's external silhouette. Second, 
Modern stealth-inspired shaping naturally converges on certain aerodynamic solutions. If engineers want to reduce radar reflections, increase lift, minimize drag, and maximize high-speed performance, all while housing twin engines, they inevitably end up with a shape that resembles the F-22. Physics dictates many of these design elements. Third, South Korean engineers have openly stated that the F-22 served as an aerodynamic benchmark. Korea wanted a high-performance air superiority fighter, and the F-22 remains the gold standard. The KF-21's nose design, wing sweep, fuselage contouring, and vertical stabilizer angles all reflect this inspiration. Fourth, the KF-21 actually looks more like the YF-22 prototype than the final operational F-22. The YF-22 had smoother surfaces, fewer bays, external pylons, and a slightly different fuselage shape. All characteristics the KF-21 shares. And finally, South Korea originally wanted to purchase the F-22, but U.S. export restrictions made that impossible. The KF-21 is, in many ways, Korea's attempt to create the closest legally attainable equivalent. It blends Raptor-like aerodynamics with practical, maintainable systems that Canada would actually benefit from. In other words, the KF-21 looks like the F-22 because it draws from the same aerodynamic DNA without the stealth complications. Real impact on Canadians. If Canada chooses the KF-21 or even evaluates it seriously, we might end up with a fighter that's more affordable to operate, easier to maintain, and better suited for long-range Arctic patrols. We might gain stronger industrial participation. We might improve our readiness rates. And we might have a fighter that reflects Canada's actual mission requirements rather than the political desire to match American procurement choices. Takeaway. So is the KF-21 the right fighter for Canada? It may not be perfect and it's not a stealth jet, but it lines up with Canada's mission profile more closely than most people realize. Its twin engine configuration, its long range performance, its moderate operating costs, its maintenance, simplicity, and its aerodynamic design, shaped in part by Lockheed Martin, make it a compelling option for Arctic defense and NORAD operations. In many ways, the KF-21 might be the fighter Canada actually needs, even if it's never seriously considered. If you want more deep dive Canadian defense analysis, be sure to subscribe to North Omega, hit the like button, and tell me in the comments what jet you think Canada should be flying in the Arctic. Should we stick with the F-35 or should Canada reconsider fighters like the KF-21 Borome and the Sabrepin? Thanks for spending time with me. I'm Pierre Shields for North Omega. Go play outside.